Hello, and welcome to a special late night edition of the Pi Camera Library. My apologies, I am speaking a bit softly, but we do have a two year old downstairs who's sleeping, and I needed to film this in low light because we're going to be having a look at the Pi Noir camera under low light conditions. So let's have a look at the hardware we're going to be playing with. This is a 5 megapixel night vision camera from the Pi Hut which is rather interesting as a 5 megapixel camera it's uh, basically a V1 camera module but it's got an adjustable lens and integrated infrared LEDs which also have little LDRs, light dependent resistors, next to them which turn the LEDs off when it's brightly lit like here with a desk lamp but when we push the desk lamp away on they come now, this illustrates one of the things that I didn't mention last time. We were talking about hot mirrors, which cut out UV and infrared. To my eyes, these LEDs here appear quite dim red, but to the camera filming them, which does have a hot mirror, it's just a, a normal USB webcam, they appear quite bright, uh, sort of violet almost. Let's bring the light back in so they turn off again. So hot mirrors don't give exactly the same response curve as human eyes. Uh, they let through a bit more infrared than we normally see. Not enough to affect the appearance of the scene, but enough to look rather different if you are filming an infrared source. You can see this if you point your mobile phone camera at an ordinary infrared TV remote control and press some buttons on the remote. You'll see the LED blinking in your mobile phone camera, but you won't see it through your eyes. So, let's have a, a look on the Pi desktop and have a play with this. We'll fire up Python 3, import the Pi camera library and initialize our camera. And then I'm going to start a preview up in the corner of the screen so we can see what's going on now. Let me just move the close-up camera out of the way. There we go. Oh, apparently I'm upside down. Let's just introduce quickly another attribute as a Pi camera. We can set rotation to 180 degrees to flip me around so I'm <laughs> the right way around here. Now, at the moment, with the desk lamp still on, you can see a certain amount of color, not, not much. I mean, just about to see some color on my hands. Let's turn off the desk lamp and see what happens when those infrared LEDs turn on. There we go now everything appears quite black and white that's interesting why does it appear black and white if an image in the camera appears black and white it must be because there is almost equal red green and blue stimulation of the sensor let's have a look at those curves we were looking at last time now I should say, bear in mind that this graph is not specific to the Pi camera. This is a generic graph for CCD CMOS sensors. But we can see that around about here on this particular graph, around about 8, 19 nanometers, we'll get more or less equal stimulation of the blue, the green and the red elements, bearing in mind that all three are limited by this black CCD CMOS sensitivity line. Now, as I say, this is not specific to the Pi camera. As it happens, these LEDs are putting out 850 nanometers, so we can be reasonably certain that around about 850 nanometers, the Pi Noir camera picks up more or less equal stimulation of the red, green, and blue channels. The reason this is black and white is because that's the only stimulation of the sensor at the moment. Uh, around me is, is basically dark now. Uh, there's almost no ambient light to be stimulating the sensor in any other way. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, the adjustable lens on this as well. So if I bring up something really really close we can get really very good resolution up close on that. You can almost see the, the printed dots on there. And <laughs> now I'm terribly blurry. Oh, and this brings me to the one flaw on this camera that actually those two LEDs when they're on really do get very, very hot. If I touch the back of them, oh, it's probably not enough to burn you, but it, it is quite painful. So if you're thinking of using one of these for, say, wildlife photography, you probably want to ensure that the wildlife can't get too near the back of those LEDs. 
um, they probably wouldn't appreciate that very much. Anyway, um, that about wraps it up for this very brief little nighttime visit. I'll just stop the preview there. Um, anyway, leave any comments for what you want to see next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.